हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू दीक्षा कर्नाटका यूट्यूब चैनल अभ्यास के सी ई टी टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फोर मोक टेस्ट फाइव हैज बीन रिलीज ऑन ट्वेंटी नाइन्थ मार्च इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोन डिस्कस द सोल्यूशन ऑफ मोक टेस्ट फाइव क्वेश्चन नंबर वन फिफ्टी वन टू वन एटी इफ यू हैव डाउनलोडेड द पेपर प्लीज जॉइन द व्हाट्सएप चैनल यूजिंग द लिंक विच इज गिवन इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स ओके या लेट स्टार्ट क्वेश्चन नंबर वन फिफ्टी वन ए कंडक्टिंग सर्क्युलर लू is placed in a uniform magnetic field of 0.04t 04 tesla with its plane perpendicular to the magnetic field yeah this is the circular loop okay it is placed in a uniform magnetic field of 0.04 tesla and the magnetic field is perpendicular to the plane of the uh, the circular loop okay magnetic field is 0.04 tesla The radius of the loop starts shrinking at two millimeter per second. That is minus dr by dt is equal to two millimeter per second. Two millimeter per second. The induced EMF in the loop when the radius is two centimeter. Yeah, when the radius is two centimeter, we need to find induced EMF in the loop. Why? Because the radius is shrinking, right? The size of the circular loop is shrinking so because of that induced emf will be produced in the loop okay so induced emf produced in the loop e equal to minus d5 by dt so what is minus d5 by dt minus d5 by dt is rate of change of magnetic flux okay d5 by dt is rate of change of magnetic flux okay so phi is magnetic flux right that is b dot a right b dot a and we can write this uh, in scalar form that is b a cos theta b a cos theta theta is angle between b and a that is magnetic field vector and area vector so here area vector and magnetic field vector both are in same direction right so this is the area vector right and this is the direction of the magnetic field vector both are in the same direction right that is the angle between b and a is equal to 0 degree so theta is equal to 0 degree phi equal to b into a right phi equal to b into a okay so what is a a is the area of the loop right that is pi r square so induced dmf e is equal to minus d by dt of b into pi r square right magnetic field is uniform right it is not changing with the time here the radius of the loop changing with the time right that is shrinking so now induced emf in the coil produced in the coil is equal to minus b into minus b into pi into 2r into dr by dt okay so minus dr by dt is rate of shrinking right that is 2 mm per second so now substitute the values that's it so b b is point 04 tesla into pi into 2 into r r is 2 cm 2 into 10 to the power minus 2 into uh, dr by dt dr by dt is 2 into 10 to the power minus 3 minus dr by dt is 2 into 10 to the power minus 3 okay so here uh, 2 into 2 into 2 is 8 8 into 0.04 right so e is equal to 8 into 0.04 that is 0.32 right so 0.32 pi into 10 to the power minus 5 volt so e is equal to 3.2 pi into 10 to the power minus 6 volt okay 6 volt 10 to the power minus 6 volt so 10 to the power minus 6 is micro so 3.2 micro volt so the correct option is d okay yeah next question question number 152 in an induction coil the current increases from 0 to 6 ampere in 0.3 second by which induced emf of 30 volts is produced in it then the value of coefficient of self induction sorry self inductance of coil will be okay so in an induction coil the current increases from 0 to 6 ampere right initial current is 0 ampere 
फाइनल करंट इज सिक्स एम्पियर ओके इन पॉइंट थ्री सेकेंड दट इज डी टी इज इक्वल टू पॉइंट थ्री सेकेंड ओके सो वट इज द चेंज इन करेंट चेंज इन करेंट डी आई इक्वल टू आई टू माइनस आई वन दट इज सिक्स एम्पियर ओके बाई विच इंड्यूस डी एम एफ ऑफ थर्टी वोल्ट दट इज ई इज इक्वल टू थर्टी वोल्ट ओके थर्टी वोल्ट इज प्रोड्यूस्ड इन इट देन द वैल्यू ऑफ कोट ऑफ सेल्फ इंडक्टेंस ऑफ द कॉल वी नीड टू फाइंड द वैल्यू ऑफ एल ओके सो नो वी नो द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन एल आई एंड मैग्नेटिक फ्लक्स राइट एल आई इज इक्वल टू एन इंटू फाइव राइट एन इंटू फाइव सो नो डिफ्रेंशिएट बोथ साइड विद रेस्पेक्ट टू टी सो एल इंटू डी आई बाई डी टी इज इक्वल टू एन इंटू डी फाइव बाई डी टी राइट सो एन इंटू डी फाइव बाई डी टी इज इंड्यूस डी एम एफ ई ओके इन मैग्नीट्यूड सो ई इज इक्वल टू एल इंटू डी आई बाई डी टी सो दिस इज द स्टैंडर्ड फॉर्मुला यू हैव टू रिमेंबर इट ओके सो ई इज थर्टी वर्ड्स एल इज एल वी नीड टू फाइंड डी आई वी नो डी टी वी नो राइट सो थर्टी इज इक्वल टू एल इंटू सिक्स डिवाइडेड बाई पॉइंट थ्री ओके सो एल इज इक्वल टू पॉइंट थ्री इंटू थर्टी डिवाइडेड बाई सिक्स ओके सो नाउ एल इज इक्वल टू हियर पॉइंट थ्री इंटू थ्री थर्टी कैन बी रिटर्न एस थ्री इंटू टेन राइट टेन इंटू पॉइंट वन इज वन राइट नेक्स्ट थ्री इंटू थ्री इज नाइन सो नाइन डिवाइडेड बाई सिक्स नाइन बाई सिक्स इज थ्री बाई टू राइट थ्री बाई टू इज वन पॉइंट फाइव सो द वैल्यू ऑफ एल इज इक्वल टू वन पॉइंट फाइव हेनरी वन पॉइंट फाइव हेनरी सो द करेक्ट ऑप्शन इज डी करेक्ट ऑप्शन इज डी ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन वन फिफ्टी थ्री इन एल सी आर सीरीज ए सी सर्किट द वोल्टेज अक्रॉस ईच ऑफ द कॉम्पोनेट एल सी एंड आर इज फिफ्टी वर्ड्स द वोल्टेज अक्रॉस द एल सी कॉम्बिनेशन इज दट इज वी एल सी वी एल सी इक्वल टू वी एल माइनस वी सी सी द फेस डिफरेंस बिटवीन एल एंड सी इज फेस डिफरेंस बिटवीन एल एंड सी इज वन एटी डिग्री राइट सो सो वी एल सी दट इज द पोटेंशियल डिफरेंस अक्रॉस एल सी विल बी फिफ्टी माइनस फिफ्टी राइट वाई इट इज वन एटी डिग्री बिकॉज वोल्टेज लीड्स द पोटेंशियल डिफरेंस अक्रॉस द इंडक्टर लीड्स द करेंट बाय नाइंटी डिग्री राइट एंड पोटेंशियल डिफरेंस अक्रॉस द कैपेसिटर लीड्स द करेंट बाय नाइंटी डिग्री राइट सो नाउ द फेस डिफरेंस इज वन एटी डिग्री राइट सो फिफ्टी माइनस फिफ्टी इज जीरो सो वी एल सी इज इक्वल टू जीरो सो द करेक्ट ऑप्शन इज डी ओके क्वेश्चन नंबर वन फिफ्टी फोर इन अ सीरीज रेजोनेंस एल सी आर सर्किट द वोल्टेज अक्रॉस आर इज हंड्रेड वोल्ट हियर वी आर इज इक्वल टू हंड्रेड वोल्ट एंड आर इक्वल टू वन किलो ओम विद सी इक्वल टू टू माइक्रो फैरेट द रेजोनेंस फ्रीक्वेंसी ओमेगा इज टू हंड्रेड रेडियन पर सेकेंड एट रेजोनेंस द वोल्टेज अक्रॉस एल इज राइट दट इज वी नीड टू फाइंड वी एल वी एल इज इक्वल टू i into xl i is current in the circuit xl is inductive reactance okay so we need to find i and xl right so first let us find i the value of current here the current i is equal to vr divided by vr divided by r right vr divided by r so vr is potential difference across the resistance right r is the resistance potential difference across the resistor okay so vr is equal to 100 volt right 100 divided by r is 1 kilo ohm that is 10 to the power 3 ohm right 100 by 10 to the power 3 is 0.1 right so which is equal to 0.1 ampere 0.1 ampere okay so now we have found the value of i right here we have to find the value of xl also right xl is inductive reactance so in the question only they have given the hint right so what is the hint in a series resonance lcr circuit right so what is the condition for resonance the condition for resonance is xl equal to x omega sorry xl equal to xc not x omega okay xl equal to xc 
so we know x e right okay now uh, we can calculate x e right how we can calculate x e is 1 divided by omega c omega we know right c we know here it is given right okay so now x e is 1 divided by omega c which is equal to x l right here omega is 200 radian per second c is 2 microfarad right so x l is equal to 1 divided by 200 radian per second into 2 microfarad 2 into 10 to the power minus 6 farad okay so 200 is 2 into 10 to the power 2 10 to the power 2 into 10 to the power minus 6 is 10 to the power minus 4 1 divided by 10 to the power minus 4 is 10 to the power 4 so xl is equal to 1 divided by 4 into 10 to the power 4 so what is the value of 1 by 4 1 by 4 is 0.25 right so 0 0.25 into 10 to the power 4 is 2500 so the value of xl is equal to 2500 ohm right si unit of the xl is 2000 uh, si unit of the xl is ohm okay so now we can easily calculate vl vl is equal to i i is here 0 0.1 ampere 0 0.1 into xl 2500 right so vl is equal to 250 volt this is the potential difference across the inductor right so the correct option is c okay i hope everybody understood how to solve this problem next question 155 uh, the value of alternating emf e in the given circuit will be okay here this is the given circuit okay potential difference across the uh, resistor is given that is 80 volt and potential difference across the inductor is given 40 volt potential difference across the c is given that is capacitor is given uh, 100 volt okay we need to find alternating emf right so let us draw the phasor diagram here we know that potential difference across the uh, inductor okay potential difference across the inductor leads the current by 90 degree right vl leads the current by 90 degree right and vc reads the current sorry vc lags the current by 90 degree right so vc lags the current by 90 degree isn't it so here vc is greater than vl isn't it so this will be vc minus vl okay here this is vr right now alternating emf v so which is equal to e okay yeah i will write e only alternating emf e equal to e equal to root of v r square plus vc minus vl whole square right so e equal to root of vr square vr square is 80 square 80 square plus vc minus vl that is 100 minus uh, 40 100 minus 40 is 60 so 80 square plus 60 square okay uh, now solve this you will get alternating emf e as 100 100 volt okay so the correct option is a okay next question 156 match least one electromagnetic wave type with least two its association or ap application and select the correct option from the uh, select select correct option from the choices given below the lists okay so least one they are given infrared rays radio waves x-rays and ultraviolet rays in least two they have given application of these waves okay so the first one infrared rays to treat muscular strain right here we use infrared rays to treat muscular strain right so why because infrared rays are heat rays okay we use heat rays to treat muscular strain okay so here the first one goes to this one i okay what you can call yeah i or the first one one goes to first one yeah second one radio waves radio waves 
for broadcasting only everybody knows right radio wave we use radio waves for broadcasting okay that's it the third one x rays to detect the fracture of bones yeah correct right because it has high penetrating power right but it cannot penetrate through high highly denser medium okay denser medium like bone okay so we use x rays to detect fracture of bones and then the four, uh, four ultraviolet rays yeah ultraviolet rays absorbed by the ozone layer atmosphere okay ozone layer of the atmosphere so the one to first one two to second one three to third one four to fourth one so the correct option is d okay yeah next question 157 when plane face of plano convex lens is silvered is silvered it behaves as concave mirror of focal length 30 cm here this is the plano convex lens okay here plane face of the plano convex lens is silvered okay now it behaves as concave mirror of focal length 30 cm f equal to 30 cm let's say f1 equal to 30 cm but when it's uh, when its curved surface is silvered it behaves as a concave mirror of focal length 10 cm here this is the curved surface okay this sur curved surface is silvered right now it behaves like a concave mirror of focal length 10 cm okay concave mirror of focal length 10 cm refractive index of the lens material is okay now we need to find the refractive index of the lens material okay yeah so now how to find refractive index of the lens material first we need to find first we need to find uh, the focal length of the this silvered surface right silvered curved surface okay so from that we can easily find the refractive index of the lens material okay let's see how here we have to use this formula 1 divided by f net is equal to 2 divided by fl that is focal length of the lens plus 1 divided by fm okay this formula we have to use from this we can easily find fm okay if we find fm we can easily find the radius of curvature of this uh, curved surface right isn't it then apply uh, lens makers formula from lens makers formula we can easily find the refractive index of the material okay here 1 divided by f net okay apply this formula to this situation the first situation here f net equal to f1 that is 30 cm so 1 divided by 30 is equal to 2 divided by fl plus 1 divided by fm what is the focal length of this mirror the focal length of the plane mirror is infinity right so 1 by infinity so now fl is equal to 60 cm focal length of the lens is 60 cm okay so the focal length of the lens okay the entire block as lens okay is 60 cm so now apply the same formula okay to this situation now 1 divided by f net f net equal to f2 that is 10 cm is equal to 2 divided by fl fl is 60 cm plus 1 divided by fm okay so now 1 divided by fm is equal to 1 by 10 minus 1 divided by 30 okay so 1 by fm is equal to 1 by 10 minus 1 by 30 right take 1 by 10 as common so this becomes 1 minus 1 by 3 1 minus 1 by 3 is 2 by 3 2 by 3 into 1 by 10 is 1 by 15 that's it so 1 divided by 15 so fm is equal to 15 cm right fm is equal to 15 cm so what is the radius of curvature here yeah, the radius of curvature of this curved surface so radius of curvature r equal to 2 times fm right which is equal to 30 cm right so now we have found the radius of curvature right so now apply lens makers formula okay lens makers formula is 1 divided by f is equal to f is focal length of the entire block that is as lens okay focal length of the entire block as lens so 1 by f is equal to mu mu is refractive index of the relative refractive index okay relative refractive index 
minus 1. Here, relative refractive index is refractive index of the lens with respect to the air. Okay, mu minus 1 into 1 divided by R1 minus 1 divided by R2. Okay, R1 is equal to 30 centimeter, right? R2 is equal to infinity, right? This is the situation. Here, R1 is equal to 30 centimeter, R2 is equal to infinity, right? Because it's plane, right? So now, here 1 divided by f, f is equal to 60 centimeter, which is equal to mu minus 1 into 1 divided by 30 minus 0, right? R2 is equal to 0. So minus 1 by infinity is 0. So now, here mu minus 1 is equal to 30 divided by 60, right? 30 by 60 is 1 by 2. So mu minus 1 equal to 1 by 2. So the value of mu is equal to 3 by 2. This is the refractive index of the lens, okay? Lens material. So refractive index of the lens material is 3 by 2, which is equal to 1.5. So the correct option is D. Okay. Next question. 158. A ray of light traveling in a transparent medium, refractive index mu, falls on a surface separating the medium from air at an angle of incidence of 45 degree. For which of the following value of mu, the ray can undergo total internal reflection. So what is the condition for total internal reflection? The condition for total internal reflection is mu that is refractive index okay relative refractive index mu must be greater than or equal to 1 divided by sin c c is critical angle okay here the critical angle is 45 degree right so the mu must be greater than or equal to 1 divided by sin 45 degree that is 1 by 1 by root 2 1 by 1 by root 2 is root 2 so mu must be greater than or equal to root 2 root 2 is 1.414 okay so, the answer which is approximately 1.40, okay. So, the correct option is B, okay. Yeah, next question, 159. Minimum deviation is observed with the prism having angle of prism A, angle of deviation delta, angle of incidence I and angle of emergence E. Then we have generally. So, here they have given the condition for angle of minimum deviation, okay. So the condition for angle of minimum deviation is I equal to E and R1 equal to R2. That's it. Okay. So these two are the condition for angle of minimum deviation. So option A is wrong. I is greater than E. I is lesser than E. Option B is wrong. The correct option is C. Okay. The third, uh, the fourth option is also wrong. So the correct option is third one, C. Okay. Yeah. Next question. 160. A ray of light passes through four transparent media with refractive indices mu1, mu2, mu3 and mu4 as shown in the figure. Here the give, figure is given, right? There are four different medium, okay? Refractive index of the each medium A, B, C, D, right? So which is equal to mu1, mu2, mu3 and mu4, okay? The surfaces of all media are parallel, okay? The surfaces of all media are parallel. If the emergence emergent ray CD, this is the emergent ray CD is parallel to the incident ray AB. Okay, so this emergent ray is parallel to the incident ray AB. We must have. Okay, so here emergent ray is parallel to incident ray AB, right? Isn't it? Here angle of incidence is theta 1. Okay, angle of incidence is theta 1. Here, angle of emergence here. So, this is theta 4. Okay, here theta 1. So, this is theta 2. This is theta 2. Okay, then here, this is theta 3. Okay, so this will also be theta 3 and this is theta 4. Okay, so here emergent ray is parallel to incident ray that is theta 1 is equal to theta 4, right? Theta 1 must be equal to theta 4. Theta 1 must be equal to theta 4, right? 
So we know that for successive refraction in a different media, mu sin theta must be equal to constant, right? Mu sin theta is equal to constant, okay? So therefore, mu 1 sin theta 1 must be equal to mu 4 sin theta 4. So theta 1 is equal to theta 4. So mu 1 is equal to mu 4. That's it, okay? Mu 1 is equal to mu 4. So the correct option is D, okay? Yeah, next question, 161. Huygens concept of secondary wave allow us to find the focal length of the focal length of a thick lens wrong right so Huygens concept of a secondary wave is a geometrical method to find a wave front okay like a plane wave front cylindrical wave front or spherical wave front okay so option B is the correct answer yeah next question 162 the condition for observing Fraunhofer diffraction from a single slit is that the light wave front incident on the slit should be okay so it should be plane why because the effective distance between the source okay effective distance between the source effective distance between the source and screen effective distance between the source and the screen is almost infinite okay effective distance between the source and the screen is infinite so so uh, here the wavefront incident on this slit should be plane. So the correct option is C. 163. The momentum of the photon of wavelength lambda is the direct question, right? Isn't it? The de Broglie wavelength. Here uh, the de Broglie wavelength of the photon lambda is equal to h by p. p is the momentum of the photon. So p equal to h divided by lambda. That's it. So option B is the correct answer. 164 question number 164 in a photoelectric emission process from a metal of work function 1.8 electron volt the kinetic energy of the energetic electron is 0.5 electron volt so this is the maximum kinetic energy of the one point sorry maximum kinetic energy of the photo electrons okay here 1.8 volt at electron volt is the work function of the metal okay the corresponding stopping potential is so what is the meaning of stopping potential the stopping potential is the negative voltage the minimum vo negative voltage applied to anode to an anode to stop the photo current right that is the stopping potential is equal to maximum kinetic energy of the photo electron right what is the meaning of to stop the photo current that is no electrons are uh, coming to anode right no electrons are coming to anode that is stopping potential is equal to maximum kinetic energy of the electron so the correct option here uh, correct option is 0.5 electron 0.5 volt so option c is the correct answer okay 0.5 volt question number 165 in a Rutherford scattering experiment, when a projectile of charge Z1 and mass M1 approaches a target nucleus of charge Z2 and mass M2. Okay, so here this is the target. Okay, here the charge is Z2. Okay, charge is Z2, mass is M2. This is the target, and here the projectile of charge z1 okay approach uh, and mass m1 so it is approaching towards uh, charge z2 and mass m2 okay the distance of closest approach is r0 so let's say this is the distance of closest approach distance of closest approach the energy of the projectile is okay so at this point you are at larger distance it has some initial velocity u okay so when it reaches this point here the distance between uh, the center of the this target or the nucleus and this point is r0 this is the distance of closest approach okay when it reaches this point here the kinetic energy of this target is completely converts into potential energy okay so the kinetic energy half m into u square is equal to 1 divided by 4 pi 
epsilon naught into z1 z2 divided by r naught okay so now the energy of the projectile energy of the projectile is directly proportional to z1 and z2 that's it okay so the correct option is a right next question 166 in a bohr model of hydrogen atom let pe represents potential energy and pe represents total energy in going to higher level okay so let us write the expression of potential energy and total energy we will get the answer okay so we know that the potential energy of the electron u is equal to minus e square divided by 4 pi epsilon naught into rn okay rn is the radius of the nth orbit e is the charge of the electron epsilon naught is uh, relative uh, sorry permittivity permittivity in free space okay or absolute permittivity so this is the potential energy okay pe and the total energy is equal to e square divided by 8 pi epsilon naught rn okay so minus e square divided by 8 pi epsilon naught rn so i can write total energy is equal to 2 times potential energy right total energy is equal to 2 times potential energy so this is the relationship between total energy and potential energy okay so if we go from lower level to higher level okay if we go from lower level to higher level what happens potential energy increases right isn't it the rn value increases okay so if it is po positive then potential energy decreases right but here it's negative because of the negative sign the potential energy increases right so potential energy increases so if potential energy increases total energy will also be increases okay so option a says potential energy decreases wrong uh, potential energy increases correct total energy decreases wrong potential energy decreases again wrong potential energy increases total energy increases so option d is the correct answer okay next question question number 167 the ratio of the energies of the hydrogen atom in its first to second excited states is okay so we know this formula right energy energy of the electron in nth orbit en is equal to minus 13.6 divided by n square electron volt right n is the energy levels right so from this we can conclude that en is directly proportional to n square right so what we need to find here we need to find the ratio of the energies of the hydrogen hydrogen atom in its first excited state to the second excited state okay so here what is the value of n for first excited state right here n equal to 1 for ground state okay so n equal to 2 for first excited state okay and n equal to 3 for second excited state and n equal to 4 for third excited states and so on so e1 by e2 is equal to 3 square divided by 2 square right 3 square divided by 2 square 3 square by 2 square is 9 by 4 so the ratio e1 divided by e2 is equal to 9 divided by 4 so the correct option is c okay yeah next question 168 fusion reaction takes place at high temperature because because uh, here the kinetic energy is high enough to overcome the coulomb repulsion between the nuclei okay so the correct option is c that's it the direct question okay so the first two options are wrong and the last option is also wrong so the correct option is c yeah the next question 169 neutron decay in free space is given as follows okay so this is the neutron decay uh, equation okay so then the pa uh, parenthesis this one represent represents as here this one represents as anti-neutrino particle okay anti-neutrino okay 
So because ele electrons are accompanied by antineutrino particles. So option C is the correct answer. Okay. Next question. 170. Uh, the binding energy per nucleon. Remember here the binding energy per nucleon of deuteron and helium nucleus is 1.1 mega electron volt, 2 mega electron volt respectively. If two deuteron nuclei react to form, react to form, okay, react to form a single helium nucleus, then the energy released is, okay, let's write the equation. Your two deuteron, two deuteron react to form a single, single helium nuclei, okay, single helium nucleus, okay. We need to find energy released, right? So they have given binding energy per nucleon, right? So we can easily find binding energy, the whole binding energy of the helium atom, okay? Binding energy of the whole helium nuclei, okay? So how to find binding energy of the helium nucleus? Here, 4 into 4 into 7 mega electron volt, okay? 7 mega electron volt is the binding energy per nucleon okay so what is the value of the nucleon of the uh, helium atom so it's 4 right so 4 into binding energy per nucleon of the helium atom so which is equal to binding energy of the helium right helium nucleus okay so this is binding energy of the helium nucleus minus minus next binding energy of the deuteron right so binding energy of the deuteron is 4 into 1.1 mega electron volt, right? So there are two deuterons, right? So 2 into 2, 4, right? So 4 into 1.1 mega electron volt, okay? So which is equal to 23.6 mega electron volt, okay? 23.6 mega electron volt. So this much energy released. Okay, this much energy released. So option A is the correct answer. I hope everybody understood how to solve this problem. Yeah, next question. Question number 171. The barrier potential of a PN junction depends on uh, 1. Type of semiconductor material or 2. Amount of doping 3. Temperature only 193. Okay, so what is the meaning of ba barrier potential of a PN junction, right? So barrier potential is a region in PN junction diode. So region in PN junction diode that contains that contains maximum maximum of maximum of potential. Okay, maximum of potential that prevents the electron to move from one side to the other. Okay, that is the meaning of barrier potential. So barrier potential depends on the type of the semiconductor semiconductor material. So the first one is correct. And the second one, amount of doping. Okay, that is also correct, right? So it depends on amount of doping. So if you dope high, so there will be a more number of holes and more number of electrons, right? Isn't it? So barrier potential, the region that is decreases, right? So then temperature. Again, the barrier potential depends on the temperature, okay? So, it depends on temperature, amount of doping and type of semiconductor material. That is 1, 2 and 3. So, the correct option is D. Question number 172. In a PN junction diode, a square input signal of 10 volt is applied as shown in the figure. This is the figure, okay? The output signal across RL will be. Okay, so here the given circuit is half wave rectifier. Okay, half wave rectifier. Right, half wave rectifier. Right, so here, here it will give output, it will give output when the diode is forward biased. Okay, when the diode is forward biased forward biased it will give output okay so what is the output of this one the circuit 
here this is how the output looks like okay so i will draw this in this color okay so there will be no output for negative 5 volt okay because it will be reversed biased right the diode will be reverse biased so there will be no output for negative 5 volt we will get output for only 5 volt okay 5 volt so the correct option is b understood yeah the next question 173 a dc battery of v volt is connected to a series combination of a resistor r and an ideal diode d as shown in the figure so this is the given figure okay so this diode is ideal diode so what is the meaning of ideal diode ideal diode diode has zero forward resistance okay forward resistance is equal to zero the potential difference across r will be okay so this is the ideal diode right that is zero forward resistance right so there will be no potential difference across r right isn't it right there will be no potential difference across r so here the potential difference across r will be zero right so delta v is equal to zero if the potential difference across r is equal to zero okay let's say this is v2 and v1 so v2 minus v1 is equal to zero so option b is the correct answer zero when diode is forward forward biased okay question number 174 circular loop of a wire and a long straight wire carry currents ic and ie respectively as shown in figure okay here the figure is given right so this is the straight wire and circular wire okay ie is the current passing through the straight wire ic is the current passing through the circular wire okay assuming that these are placed in the same plane the magnetic fields will be zero at the center of the loop when the separation is okay the magnetic field is zero okay the magnetic field that is net magnetic field is equal to zero at the center of the loop okay so when the separation h is that is you need to find the expression of h right yeah so now when we will get net magnetic field zero when the magnetic field due to straight line at this point magnetic field due to straight line at the center of the circular wire equal to magnetic field due to the circular loop at its center right so magnetic field due to the straight wire okay magnetic field due to the straight wire must be equal to magnetic field due to the circular wire right at the center at this point okay so now what is the magnetic field due to the straight wire at this point that is the center of the circular loop so that is equal to mu not into current passing through this wire that is ie divided by 2 pi 2 pi into distance that is h okay which is equal to magnetic field due to the circular wire at its center that is mu not into ic divided by 2 pi r so mu not mu not will get cancel okay uh, sorry this is 2 r only not 2 pi r okay so this is 2 r and 2 2 will get cancel okay so we need to find the expression of h so h is equal to i e into r i e into r divided by i c into hence the correct option is a okay next question 175 which of the following set have different dimensions okay uh, here the pressure is force per unit area okay here the si unit is newton per meter square okay now here you don't need to find the dimension formula of each physical quantity okay just 
compare the SI units. Here, what is the SI unit of Young's modulus? Newton per meter square. For stress, again, Newton per meter square. Right? So, the first option is wrong. The second one, EMF potential difference, electric potential. It's volts, right? So, the option B is wrong. Option C, heat, work done, energy. Here, this one is also wrong because heat is nothing but energy, right? Again, work done, uh, SI unit of the work done is joule, that is energy, and SI unit of the energy is joule only. So, all are same. So, option C is wrong. Option D, dipole moment, electric flux, electric field. So, what is the SI unit of the dipole moment? SI unit of the dipole moment is coulomb meter, okay? SI unit of the electric flux, right? SI unit of the electric flux is here, electric flux is E into E dot, e dot dA, right? E dot dA. So, what is the SI unit of E? Newton per coulomb. What is the SI unit of A? Meter square. So, for electric flux, it's Newton meter square per coulomb. So, for electric field, it's Newton per coulomb. Here, this set, okay, this set have different dimensions, right? So, option D is the correct answer, okay? Next question, 176. An object is moving with the uniform acceleration, which is parallel to its instantaneous direction of motion. The displacement S, velocity graph of this object is the direct question, right? So, we know third equation of motion, V square equal to U square plus 2AS, okay? So, V square is directly proportional to S, right? Here, it is moving with the uniform acceleration, right? So, V square is directly proportional to X. So, if you draw the graph of S versus V, this is how it looks like, okay? So, the correct option is B. Yeah, the next question, 177. The speed of a projectile at its maximum height is root 3 by 2 times its initial speed. Here, yeah, the speed, okay. Here, yeah, let us draw the diagram, okay. Here, yeah, this is the projectile motion. Initial velocity is V, angle theta. Speed at the speed at the maximum height, let's say V, which is equal to root 3 by 2 times initial velocity, right? At the maximum height, the speed of the projectile, so this is U, okay? Initial velocity is U. So, at the maximum height, the speed of the projectile is equal to the horizontal component of U, right? Horizontal component of U, that is U cos theta. Okay, if the range of the projectile is P, if the range of the projectile is P times the maximum height attained by it. So, range of the projectile R is equal to P times the maximum height attained by it. So, then we need to find the value of P. Okay, okay. so from this we can easily find the value of theta, that is angle of projection, right? So, U, U will get cancelled theta equal to 30 degree, right? Theta equal to 30 degree. So, now the maximum height is equal to, what is the formula for maximum height? Formula for maximum height is u square sin square theta divided by 2g, right? So, what is the maximum, oh sorry, what is the formula for range? The formula for range is 2 u square sin 2 theta by g, right? Here, r equal to p times h max, right? Okay. So, now, 2 u square sin, square, sin 2 theta, okay? 2 u square sin 2 theta divided by g equal to here u square sin square theta divided by 2g. Okay, so here u square, u square will get cancelled, g, g will get cancelled. Theta equal to 30 degree, right? So, sin 2 theta is sin 60 degree, sin 60 degree is root 3 by 2. Okay, which is equal to, which is equal to here, 
sin square theta, right? Sin square theta here p times sin square, p times maximum height, right? Now multiply into p, okay? So now theta is 30 degrees, sin square theta is that is sin square 30 degrees 1 by 4, okay? 1 by 4 into 2 into p, okay? So now the value of p is equal to here 2, 2 will get cancelled, the value of p equal to 4 into root 3. So the correct option is c, okay? Yeah, the next question 178. Man weighing 80 kg stands on a weighing scale in a lift which is moving upward with a uniform acceleration of 5 meter per second square. Okay. So this is the lift. Okay. And here this is the weighing machine. He stands on weighing machine. The mass of a man is 80 kg. Okay. This lift is moving in downward direction with an acceleration 5 meter per second square. What would be the reading on this scale? Okay. So let us draw the free body diagram. Okay, free body diagram for man. First, draw the frame of reference, right? So this is y, x. So this is my frame of reference. So now isolate the body. Here, man, okay. N is the normal reaction, okay? normal reaction acting on a man and mg is gravitational force okay acting on a man yeah and he is here he is in a lift right isn't it so it is moving in downward direction right with the acceleration a equal to 5 meter per second square right so here a equal to 5 meter per second square okay so now write the force equation that is you have to apply Newton second law of motion okay let's apply Newton second law of motion so there is no acceleration along the horizontal direction okay so I will only write the force along the force equation along the vertical direction okay so summation of Fy is equal to m into Ay right so summation of fy is mg minus n that is net fo uh, force along the vertical direction okay on man which is equal to m into ay right so now n equal to mg minus m into ay so now substitute the values that's it okay so n equal to m into g that is 80 into 10 800 right minus m into a y that is 80 into 5 400 okay so the value of n that is uh, the reading okay the value of the reading is equal to 400 newton okay 400 newton so the correct option is c okay so next question Next question, 179. A simple pendulum is released from A as shown in figure. If M and L represent the mass of the bob, here M is the mass of the bob, L is the length of the string or length of the pendulum. The gain in kinetic energy at B. Okay, so here the bob is released, right? Isn't it? So at this point, we need to find Okay, here the bob comes from A to B. So we need to find the gain in kinetic energy. The bob gains kinetic energy. Okay. So if bob gains kinetic energy, so it loses potential energy, right? Okay. So the loss of potential energy is equal to gain in kinetic energy. Gain in kinetic energy. Okay. So let us find loss of potential energy. Lot of loss of potential energy is m into g into h, which is equal to gain in kinetic energy. Okay, gain in kinetic energy. So what is the value of h here? Right. This is h. Right. This is l. Here the angle is 30 degree. So h is equal to 
L cos 30 degree, L cos 30 degree. So, gain in kinetic energy, gain in kinetic energy is equal to mg L cos 30 degree, cos 30 degree is root 3 by 2. So, this is root 3 divided by 2 into mg L, that is it. So, the correct option is C, okay. Last question, two spheres A and B of masses M and 2M and radii 2R and R respectively are placed in contact as shown in the figure. The center of mass of the system is, okay. So, we know that the center of mass lies, okay, in a symmetrical object or uniform object, center of mass lies at the geometrical center of that object, okay. So, center of mass of the bigger sphere, this bigger sphere lies at the center of this bigger sphere only, right. Here, center of mass of the smaller sphere lies at the center of the smaller sphere only, right, okay. So, let us take this as origin 0, 0, okay. And here, this will be 3R, 3R, 0, okay, 0, 0 and 3R, 0. So, now, center of mass of the system R, C, O, M is equal to M1, R1 plus M2, R2 divided by M1 plus M2, right. Here, M1 is equal to M, M2 is equal to 2M, okay. Here R1 is x1, y1, z1, y1, z1 is 0 anyway. So, here R1 is equal to x1 which is equal to 0, right. R2 is equal to x2 which is equal to 3R, okay. Y1, y2, z1, z2 all are 0, right. So, now center of mass of the system R C O M is equal to M1, M1 is M, R1 is 0 plus M2 is 2M, right, R2 is 3R whole divided by, whole divided by M1 plus M2, that is 3M. So, R C O M is equal to, R C O M is equal to here, M, M will get cancelled, uh, 3, 3 will get cancelled, which is equal to 2 r that is the center of mass of the system lies at the point of contact right at the point of contact so the correct option is c okay i hope everybody understood i hope you guys loved this video so if you love this video please like and share so if you want to watch more such videos please subscribe the channel thank you